Legion, it's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Distant Stars. In our Dynastic Divinity series, we are back a little bit sooner than planned because the uh, Frostpunk series didn't last particularly long. I wasn't expecting it to take a full 20 episodes, to tell you the truth. And I've been excited to get back to this series because, as I mentioned in the quite long finale, um, and yes, this is Arcturus 3, by the way. We're going to talk about this in just a second because I'm not sure what's even going on right now. But um, as I mentioned in the quite long finale, and as I mentioned many times in the first 20 episodes, this run is just going way too well. Uh, we haven't really had any fighting. We haven't had anything go wrong. We haven't... Uh, we've got a couple of Gaia planets that we're about to colonize. We don't have room for them in our core systems right now, but we're going to have to start um, doing some sectors soon, and that should be reasonably easy. There is one little weird thing that I'm noticing, and that is Arcturus 3, which I'm pretty sure was the Gaia planet we discovered in the episode Arcturus Dawn, which I believe was episode 19 of the first leg of the series. And... Um, it is now showing it's a shrouded world. I don't know if that's just because... I mean, a shrouded world is a specific world type. It's not simply a world that's out of sensor range. So we still have a Gaia planet we can colonize here in Istrum. Remember that accidental run-in with the uh, dimensional anomaly here in the last episode. And we will definitely uh, work on that. Let's go ahead and do this Star Fortress upgrade. But um, I'm a little bit curious to see... The science ship will be headed back to Arctura soon. I'm a little bit curious to see what's going on with that world. Because I haven't done anything with this save file. I haven't even touched it. The only thing I've done is activate and deactivate. Or rather, deactivate and then reactivate the Distant Stars story pack. Because I needed to record a few episodes of High Dominion. So, not sure what's going on. But let's dive back in here. We are doing a whole bunch at once, actually. Because things have been going generally well. We're expanding in this direction as fast as we can. Looks like we have some Pitharan dust, which we don't have already yet, so that's quite nice. And that's going to give us additional food output. The mineral cluster is a holographic record, multi-sided, many-edged, and translucent. It remains secure in the HSV Livendor's tractor beam, but our experts will need some time to decode its contents. A special project has been issued to expedite this process. Situation Very well. Log updated. So now we have... Now we still need a science ship to do the project, which is the Crystal Codex. So the science ship that looked at that just now is going to do that, and then they will head over to Arcturus after that. And we have Task Force Marasma, which is heading back for some upgrades. So you're currently going to the Genesis station, and Task Force Bosca has been hanging out here. Those are very similar fleets. And then we have these raiders that really aren't doing anything for me at the moment. I could maybe put them in with Task Force Bosca if we have the command limit for it. I don't remember. Let's take a look. We don't. These are exactly at command limit, so we're having to wait. Speaking of command limit, let's look at our research. We are two months away from tachyon sensors, one month away from having more Empire leader capacity, and eight months away from battleships. So we're going to have some ship design to do this episode, most likely. We're going to have lots to do this episode, complete. honestly. By the way, you might notice, if you look over here, I have renamed some of the core worlds with different names than what we had initially. Now, the Rimok system I'm keeping for now with Prime, Secondus, and Tertius. But Mudstrom Prime is now Throne of Wind. It's a Savannah world. And then we have... Someone had suggested that I rename a world after Barim, our leader that gave his life in the Shroud. And so this tropical world has been renamed to Obarim. And then we have Boromar over here, which is kind of a play on the name. Throne of Sand is here in Toraville. It's a desert world that we've uh, colonized. Uh, mainly, it's um, other members of our pious, not really a federation, but we have lots of other species that are coming in and joining us. So they're populating that. And then Campira, of course, well, that's Campira. We didn't rename that. We have also Throne of the Three Stars, because this is a continental world surrounding the trinary star system of Tikwum. So I just wanted to point out, some people have been saying I should rename some planets, and I agree, especially the one after the Barim, and I appreciate that suggestion. It was a good idea. Okay, Empire Looter Capacity plus two and reader, uh, Leader Recruitment Cost Reduction has been granted. Now, let's see. Extra starbase capacity could come in handy. Naval capacity, uh, probably more important at the moment. Let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be done in 18 months. Tachyon sensor is done in one month. System survey complete. Excellent. So that means we can go ahead and get started here. And you're building those mining stations. Let's get a starbase. I'm going to give some very specific surveying orders here because I want to explore this territory as rapidly as possible. 
Alright, you're, you're looking at the Crystal Codex. Okay, there's the Gaia world again. It's showing it's a Gaia world again. Oh, the Shroud went away. I don't even know anymore. I, I just, okay, alright, fine. It's a Gaia planet. I'm not sure what was happening. I'm a little bit concerned about that world now, but we're gonna have to see what happened because it seems to be going back and forth. Not quite sure what happened there. Um, you guys can explain it to me in the comments if there is an explanation, but if there is not, no worries. Now, this science ship needs more to do. Let's put you on automatic exploration, please. I don't know why you're just chilling there doing nothing. Let's give you something. And do we have anything over here that we can build? No, we've fully built that stuff up. So I think the best thing to do would be we have a ship there already. We have a couple of construction ships here. Let's move one there and go ahead and move one to Arcturus because I think we've already partially surveyed Arcturus. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Nice. New technology. Also, scientist, scientist Pudrig Denharak, who is commanding the HSV Inaldur, has leveled up. So that might mean... No, not quite done. That's not the same. It's a different scientist. All right, tachyon sensors have been researched, so those will go on our ships very soon. Defense grid supercomputer. Mm, I think I'd rather do guardian point defense first. And we do have the ability to go for a new tradition. So, army damage increased by 25%. Yep. Warrior mindset. This is our final Special ascension perk complete. that we're going for. The holographic data documents the terms and conditions for a trilateral trade treaty between three major alien powers that once dominated this quadrant of the galaxy. Context eludes us, and the details are meaningless, but science officer Valdir Denbadir feels that this will prove invaluable to improving our own ability to communicate with alien forces. So we're getting some extra society research from this, which will help with naval capacity. That's one of our longest running projects at the moment, just started. And then also, she will gain the statecraft ability. It is a she, right? Yes, it is. So she has that. So she's actually quite an impressive researcher from the perspective of society research. It's quite nice. Okay, so this starbase over here, this is around an L gate, and we need it to be built up. Notice the L gate icons have been changed as part of the latest update. I do want to go ahead and queue this upgrade up again. The Tikwim station is building anchorages to fix the naval capacity problem. I think I want to go ahead and queue up the Star Fortress after these anchorages are done. So we have we're attacking the naval capacity problem from two different directions at the moment. Let's go ahead and upgrade you. This is mainly for sensors. I do want to double check and make sure that I'm not out of power on any of my ships. No, I'm not. Good. Our ships have been improved. Anomaly found. Anomaly found. It's back. Canyons deep enough to be seen from orbit. Four of the surface of Arcturus 4. Excuse me, yet the planet is dry as a dust bowl. What could have happened to the water that once so profoundly carved Arcturus 4's stone? Arcturus 3 is showing as a shrouded world again, too. What's going on there? We're, we're going to have to take, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, it's going back and forth. The ship will resume its previous actions when done. That might be some kind of a trap. All right, we're going to research that. Construction complete. Now it's showing as a Gaia planet again. What's happening? We need to survey it. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Okay, metamorphic dehydration. Yeah, tell you what, you come survey this thing, like, right now. Before anything else. Following a thorough investigation of Arturus for the HSV Livendor crew has confirmed that the planet used to be covered in flowing water several billion years ago. However, the geochemical composition of the planet's basalt crust proved highly hydrophilic, so much so that Arturus 4's thirsty rocks eventually absorbed and bound all of the water on its surface. Now all the remains of those vast oceans are salty brine, stakes, brine streaks lining Arturus 4's numerous canyons. Science officer Valdrick Denvadir adds that the mineral hydrates now dominating Art Arturus 4's landscape could have many valuable industrial applications. Interesting. All right, so check that out, like yesterday, please. Okay, let's also go ahead and build a starbase. And we do have a construction ship on the way there. Yes, we do. And you should be building stations, sir. Get that done. What are you waiting on? All right, let's see if we can get over to Ar Arturus 3 before it shrouds again. All right, we have finished the research of battleships, and we can go for the final Elgate insight. I think it really is the last Elgate insight. Yep. 
Am I ready, though, is the question, or should I wait? Because I feel like it's going to be an endgame level event. Let's do a few other research projects before we go for that, shall we? I think I would like to do... Let's give our cruisers some additional hull points. I think that's a good idea. Now we are surveying. Here we go. Enigmatic energy readings surround Arcturus 3 as though the entire planet is waving. Here we go. In and out of existence. Okay, research. Let's let's find out what the heck's going on here. So it's phase shifted. Building build speed plant minus 50%. That explains some of what was going on. Our naval capacity situation has resolved, which is good. Star Fortress is building there. What are you doing? All right. We will soon have more systems to colonize out here. Incoming transmission. Research agreement for how long? 25 years. And you're going to give me that much energy and that many minerals. This is the hegemony of Jurandar. That's going to help me a lot with engineering technologies. It's going to help you a heck of a lot. And where are you? You're over here? Okay, fine. I'll take the research. Series has been going well. You're not an imminent threat to me. And besides, if we have an endgame threat, it's in my best interest to help some of the other guys be stronger and potentially stand up to that. Okay, so could I do... Hang on, have I done a um, land clearance here yet? No, I haven't. I think I'm better off doing just a standard power... Well... Hmm. There's a lot of energy already, already being put out by this planet. Let's do an energy grid. So... I'm going to talk about this right now because I just remembered and at the end of um, the first part of the series somebody had asked me to explain this and I told them I would and then I got distracted. Um, I think it was right before I was defending my thesis so I had a lot going on but um, somebody had asked, actually a couple of people have asked um, me to go back over what is my logic for these tiles uh, and, and what I put on tiles and why I don't put for instance things like the energy grid on power tiles. Why do I try to avoid that? Why do I try to avoid putting the, for instance, the Paradise Dome on a food tile? Because the Paradise Dome is a food and unity production building. Right here. You can see it. So why wouldn't you put that on a food tile, Hadrian? You can put it on a food tile. That's fine. But from a min-maxing standpoint, the highest possible upgrades to a hydroponics farm, in the case of food, or to a power plant, in the case of power, or to a mining grid in the case of mining in the case of minerals the highest possible upgrades are better than anything you're going to get from the um from combining a natural food tile with the food bonus of say the paradise dome so what i mean by that is you are better off if you really want to maximize the amount of production that you are getting for a um for a planet you want to make sure that you're getting as much as possible out of every tile. And if you put an energy grid, even a fully upgraded energy grid, on top of, a, of an energy tile that could have a power plant on it that would have a bunch more energy if you went with a power plant instead, you actually are losing out on potentially your, your full potential. It's not a lot. It's not a huge difference. There's not, it's, it's not game-breaking that I avoid. Uh, it wouldn't completely change everything about my game to do it one way or the other. It's just a kind of a personal preference. This is why some people have a, had a tendency to disagree from time to time when I explain that this is what I do. And I wanted to go back in and make sure that people understood that that's the reasoning behind why I put those, those buildings where I do and where I don't. Because ultimately, if I see an energy tile, again, I want a power plant on that energy tile because I know that that's going to maximize, that building is going to maximize that power um, bonus on the tile in a way that no other building could. So, if that makes sense, let me know. If not, I'll be happy to talk about it more. But um, somebody, asked, somebody had asked me uh, to do so, and I said that I would in the finale. And then I, like I said, promptly forgot. So, I appreciate the somewhat recent reminder. So, let's... Speaking of that, do I want to do hydroponics from here? We're kind of starting to level out on food. So what I could do is put a mineral processing plant down here because since we're not going to use the food, to me it's like the equivalent of a blank tile. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw down the mineral processing plant on Throne of the Three Stars. 
Okay, so this system now belongs to us. Let's build some mining stations and some research stations. Construction complete. The HSV Livendor has made an incredible discovery in orbit of Arcturus 3. The planet possesses a hitherto thought impossible number of superimposed quantum states per unit of space. Science officer Valdrig Den Badir suggests Arcturus 3, which she codenamed the Veil, exists simultaneously in two dimensions, our own and an unknown other. What is more, the number of quantum states in the particle fields surrounding the planet is increasing at a constant rate. As of yet, there is no confirmed theory that could account for this phenomenon. Valdrig Den Badir posits that the psionic energy surrounds... The transmission crackles out to static. What is going on out there? Phased planet. Okay. The HSV Livendor crew apologizes for the abrupt termination of their initial report. During transmission, the veil experienced a complete dimensional phase shift, its particle fields rotating out of one dimension and into another. The cloud of psionic energy has been lifted, revealing a glittering jewel of a Gaia world. Fascinatingly, the number of superimposed quantum states appears to have been reset as the planet shifted and is now increasing at the same rate as when the planet was a shrouded world. Valdrig Den Badir has used the rate of increase of particle superimposition and the total number of quantum states at the time of transition to extrapolate a three-month cycle for the planet's dimensional shifts. Perhaps we might develop a method to prevent the planet from shifting, but we should secure the system first. Oh, this is really cool. Holy crap. Um, all right, so... This is completely new to distant stars. I love every single bit of this. So this is going to give us a little bit of physics research to help with guardian point events, which I appreciate. Oh, it's so awesome. All right, so Arcturus is right here. All right, we are ready to colonize Istrum. We don't have space for another core world at the moment, but what we do have room for is to go ahead and get some of this, this stuff here built, which I will do. Actually, you know what? Let's do just mining stations, and I'll bring you here to do research stations. How about that? All right, still exploring out in this direction. So I need to start thinking seriously about sectors. Rimuk might need to be in a sector, for instance, and so might Soyun. We have this terraforming happening over here. It's a tundra world at the moment, so let's go ahead and do the thing. And we'll probably name it the Rimuk Sector, actually. No, not Rimic Secundus, just Rimic. This is the Rimic sector, and do we have... Yes, we do have room. So we're going to promote a governor. Ooh. Okay, so we have a governor with faster experience gain. Yep, let's definitely go for that. Brand new governor. And of course, also psychic. So, extra unity output. Alright, so now we have all of this in a new sector. The Rimic sector. We're also going to go ahead and put you here in the Rimic sector. Okay. Now that we've done that, we do have room to add another core world, and I would like to do that right freaking now. So we're going to colonize that 24-slot Gaia planet from Tiquim. Looks like it's the best. Planet has an anomaly. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, we've got to look up what's going on here. Mysterious Tanker. It's a level 5. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and have Pudrig Den Harak, who is nearby, look into this. Right? You are nearby, aren't you? Where is Pudrig Den Harak? No, Pudrig Den Harak is not nearby at all. So you're going to take your sweet time getting over there. Why, why am I... Why does Pudrig have to come investigate this? Are you really the best scientist? Okay, fine. I'm not going to worry about finding another one to replace them. They're going to take a while to get over there, but we have plenty of other stuff to do in the meantime. So we'll do that. What do we have here? Oh. Okay, so we were giving them some monthly Aurelium ore. Don't even remember why. Are they at war with someone? Man, the physics research Systems on the Arcturus complete. system. Alright, let's do the education and healthcare campaign, and then also map the stars seems to have disappeared. Now that's going to be a little System bit harder to re-up. Yeah, let's do it. I hate it because we still, we don't have a lot of influence income. System survey complete. Our science officer has found an anomaly. It will require extensive probing, but could garner a substantial fine. This is in, this is Arcturus 5. So let's go ahead and research Arcturus 5. 
Nova. And then we are going to have to secure the Arcturus system to continue with this quest. Supposedly. At least that was what they thought. Construction Waiting complete. for some influence to build back up to where I can build this starbase. Okay, Governor... Rude. Governor Vibrate Densukar has developed new skills. Architectural interest. Good! That'll help with building in the new sector. Explosions in the sky. The planet Arcturus V is the home of a marvel of nature. Giant colorful explosions appear in the sky a result of the chemical composition of the atmosphere reacting to the sun's gamma rays. Students and senior scientists alike are spreading this fine like a wildfire. It has generated quite the spark of interest for the scientific field amongst our people. Inspired science recruits modifier added for 120 months, giving the following effects. Survey speed plus 20%, anomaly research speed plus 20%. I would not have spent the influence on that edict just now if I had known that was going to happen. Dang it. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Let's upgrade that and continue along. What have we here? Society research available. Of course. Climate restoration could be a good idea. I think we have some terraforming candidates. Fire rate plus 5%. Command center. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Guardian point defense. Okay, so I do have the ability... I, I have some of this in my territory, so I want to go ahead and research dark matter drawing, because I can then take advantage of that in Unor and get a nice physics boost. System physics is already complete. where we are out in front, research-wise, but still a good thing to have. All right, what eat it? Declare Saint. Complete. Oh, that was giving me extra unity. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Okay, good. Improved cruiser hulls done. Hey, check that out. Better mining networks, or should we do quantum missiles? Or Citadel, for that matter. Let's go ahead and do Citadel because the Elgate, um... System we we want to have those Elgate stations fully upgraded as soon as possible. The mineral composition of Figaro 5D does not match projections. Figure out why, please. Looks like a tomb world. That could be part of the reason. Just a hunch. Just a just a possible hunch. Alright, let's build a starbase around Arcturus, and this will hopefully continue the quest. How close are we? We're 13 months away from another tradition. Oh, it is good to be playing Dynastic Divinity again. Despite the planet's lack of atmosphere, there is evidence of some kind of artificial structure on Figaro 4 that may indicate a past civilization. Thorough scans have revealed the cause of Figaro 5D's odd metal composition. The moon is the crash site of a dozen of uh, of a dozen massive spaceships larger than anything we could have ever imagined. Their construction dates back several million years. All right, so a little bit of um, mineral mineral boost there. Oh, well, we just uncontrollably got the last Elgate in sight. It was not immediately apparent at the time, but the recent survey carried out by the HSV Livendor seemingly sparked a breakthrough in the ongoing study of the mysterious Elgates when the report filtered back to the scientific community on Old Orin. I'm glad I didn't spend time researching that. Fortuitous. We have now gathered sufficient Elgate insights to research the technology behind them. Once this has been done, one of our science ships should be able to abort the perpetual maintenance ci cycle they are stuck in. The Elk Cluster is almost within our reach. Good. Or is it good? Complete. The Shroud is accessible. Let's communicate with that. A presence of sorts lingers nearby. It beckons us deeper into the Shroud. Reach in. A shard of perfect crystal floats here, rotating slowly around its own axis. As we approach, it shatters into a, th into a thousand pieces. So we can have an ethic attractiveness boost. We can have increased influence with a low probability of success. I like that idea, though. We can have a medium probability of success of having increased firing rate. Let's go for... The, the boon here. Um, this this could hurt. <laughs> this could be painful. Hang on. Are we? Do we still have the punishment to our... No, we don't. We don't have a negative on our science anymore. I'm guessing because it expired right before we were able to communicate with the Shroud again. Let's try the increased influence. 
Our telepaths have been overwhelmed by the intense strain they were put under during our communication with Shroud. They can no longer maintain the length. Link, excuse me. Aw, oh, sad day. Okay, well, this has been a nice little jaunt back into Dynastic Divinity, getting our feet wet again. We have a new sector establishing itself here, and we will... I thought you were supposed to be fro... Didn't I pause the game? The crew of the HSV Carpenter were intrigued to find the remnants of an industrial age civilization on Fegger 4. Investigation indicates Fegger 4 had sustained an atmosphere for millions of years until massive superflares from the unstable surface of the star Fegor led to runaway ionization and depletion of the planet's atmospheric gases. With no atmosphere, the lifeless cities on Fegger 4 have been frozen in time for millennia, silent monuments to the mass extinction that happened there. Science officer Vadri Denvagors cautions that any colonies in the Fegor system may be subject to the whims of the star's turbulence. Interesting. Okay, so, as I was saying, before I realized the game was not paused, this has been an interesting little jaunt back into uh, Dynastic Divinity. I'm going to stop this episode here and take a little bit of a break, and then when we jump back in with the next episode, we are going to have some more colonizing to do. Hopefully we'll be able to add... I need to figure out what's going on here with this anomaly, and I think that science ship may finally be getting close. Maybe? Or are they still, like, way far away? They're still incredibly far away. Maybe by the end of the next episode, they'll be nearby, and we can actually colonize that. But there's other worlds as well that we can colonize. We have um, this Tundra world here, which we might even terraform, to tell you the truth. And speaking of terraforming projects, we have this terraforming project, which is going to be done before long. And um, this world, which we can colonize right now, actually. I'll do that at the beginning of the next one. And we'll have um, some additional income coming in from that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. Now that Dynastic Divinity is back, new episodes, as usual, will be coming out every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.